Hello everybody, so here's a small documentary on the Portland protests regarding George Floyd and Breonna Taylor's deaths, the Black Lives Matter movement, and criminal justice reform. So I'm going to give you guys contextual commentary while showing you guys the different video clips that are going on. Pretty much what I'm going to be focusing on are the peaceful daytime protests and the violent nighttime protests, so viewer discretion advised with the violent nighttime protests as well. In addition, I apologize if there's any sort of video or audio complications. My camera actually got attacked by a dog in the process of me filming all of this. So anyway, here we go. So this was on Friday, May 29th, 2020. Now the energy of this moment is difficult to describe because on the one hand, no one wants to engage in violence, yet everyone here was prepared for any worst case scenario. IBEA stands for Ideas Big. It's a Portland group created by college students meant to create and expand innovative ideas. So I suppose in this case, it's for justice reform, though I don't think graffitiing your name as legitimacy, assuming it was them, which it may not have been them to graffiti. Now the question I had in this moment was, why was traffic stopped? Well, interestingly enough, it's because people were positioning their cars like this to make it safer for us. I have to respect these people considering the fact that this was on a curved road on an interstate, so if there was a crash, they'd be dead. This really shows the dedication towards the cause. thousands of people. This was only a small fraction of the amount of people that had shown up. We got a bunch of donations from people in the Bay Area and Portland. We are here to have earplugs, water, face masks, keep everybody safe, hand sanitizer, COVID is a thing. That is why we're here. Now, earplugs were being given because police were reportedly planning on using military sonic sound weapons meant for naval battles with pirates, as an example. Sir, you individually, who do you have to call? Who do you have to write? A huge aspect of these protests were circulated around Breonna Taylor, the girl who was killed in her bed after police broke into her home unannounced. At this moment, I realized that there were no police around as well, and so what I didn't realize is that the police in this moment were far away preparing for the night. Okay, okay. Black men? Black men? Are you showing up for your black women? Be clear about that. This night is about women. So, when we are asked to support our black women, we need to, to let them know. I don't want to have to get back on this mic, but y'all are being real quiet. There is not enough support here, and that shows throughout our community. There is a divide. That divide was not caused by us, but that divide is carried out by us. So I need all my black men to show up and show that we are supporting black women. So let me hear you. Are we supporting black women? My black men, are we supporting black women? Make sure you remember that. All throughout this protest, when you go home, when you call your mom, when you call your grandma, remember who the backbone to our community is. Don't forget it. They need our support. We cannot let them In addition to Black Lives Matter, the speeches here were also focused on other oppressed groups as well. In this case, as you will see, Native Americans. I grew up here in Portland. I grew up in North and Northeast Portland. I grew up in the black community. And I am proud to stand here in solidarity tonight. Also the tribal relations director for the city of Portland so I am here representing that tribal relations program here at this movement in solidarity tonight where's our native people Should we all be upset about 
about discrimination? Yes. Should I have to continue talking about this? Yes. So we can't get tired, can we? No. So we're not going to. How are you feeling about the protest and the energy right now? I'm loving it. I you know, and even when I wasn't here, I've been watching it on TV for two days solid. And I, these young people got it, they got it going on. They are organized and they are making the old folks move. <laughs> now, to conclude this little portion of the day protest, there is going to be a lady talking about her 22 year old friend who attended a protest in Portland. She was standing next to a group of kids. She went down Sunday night and was standing next to children, and they got tear gassed. And that's just appalling. They were doing nothing wrong. We're just here asking for people to be alive. And so I just brought what I could so I could come and help because it's not fucking fair. So, you know, but the thing that's so beautiful about all of this is how well everyone is taking care of each other here. You know, people are giving water and food and snacks and sanitizer and masks. And God, I just gave my goggles to a woman I've never met before just to keep everybody safe because this shit's got to stop. We all deserve to be alive and we all deserve to be safe here. And that's what we're doing out here tonight. Overall, the day protests have been happening every day and are not receiving the same attention as their violent counterparts at night. Like it or hate it, the truth is that less people tune into the videos on peaceful protests. And, well, that sucks. But that's the truth. Despite this, I did want to add the nonviolent action into this type of a video in order to do the justice on the whole movement at large. Okay, so here is the second half of the protest documentary contrasting the peaceful day marches. So the specific video footage I'm doing is on Saturday, March 30th. So this is the day after the peaceful day protest. So peaceful day protest was on a Friday. This is Saturday night. Now, generally what these protests are like is pretty much the video that I'm going to be showing you guys. So I showed up around 1130 and I was told by my friend that violence was about to ensue between the police and the protesters. That's the only context I can give you guys as we're about to embark on this cluster of a journey that we have moving forward. So right now it looks like the police are wanting us to leave, but obviously nobody's going to be doing that. I'm not exactly sure why, so I'm going to try to find out here. But so far it looks like they're probably going to use force. Please leave the area to the south now. Uh, because they're scared, be because it's time to change. And arrest. Bring it! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! Now there was a massive empty square to block protesters from the Justice Center. There was no police near us. They were about 100 meters or so away. This is scary. They're mad that they're getting water balls thrown. This is a civil disturbance and we have declared an unlawful assembly. Leave the area to the south now or you'll be subject to use of force. And so when I filmed this, I wasn't very sure as to what that was, but it turns out that's a rubber bullet. Now I haven't seen one that wasn't getting shot, so it took me by surprise, but I don't know what this guy was doing with this. Now, important note on this is that people weren't hit by these bottles, to the best of my knowledge. Protesters threw random material in the square as essentially an FU to police because they were told not to. But as far as I had personally seen, nobody was hit by these.
This is the Portland Police Bureau. This is a civil disturbance that we have declared an unlawful assembly. Leave the area to the south now, or you'll be subject to use of force and arrest. Can I ask you a question real quick? Yes, sir. How did you get in there? How did I get in here? Yeah. That fence is broken down back there. <laughs> and I'm the only one out here that has the balls to tell them to fuck them. <laughs> Quit throwing shit. We want it to be a peaceful protest. I, I see people throwing it's shit though. Until they start shooting them. If it's just water bottles, no, it's not It doesn't matter, not to them though. Yeah, it, it's equal in both ways. It don't matter. It don't matter. It's equal in both ways. If we want to be peaceful, don't be throwing stuff. A water bottle and a bullet are not equal uses of force. I get that. But for to, to them, they know that there's 99% of us and 1% of them fuckers. They don't care. Can you get on there and say that you're my camera? That was an interesting dialogue between the people who wanted it to be completely peaceful and those who were justifying throwing things over into the square. We want peace! We want peace! We have declared an unlawful assembly. Leave the area to the south now, or you'll be subject to use of force. Now, to be fair, I don't know if people were hitting police officers prior to me getting there. What I do know is the amount of violence used against people to follow is scarcely justified. Most of the things that were thrown, if not all, that I had seen and I had recorded was just being thrown into that road. Are they actually hitting anybody? Because it looks like they're just hitting the floor. Yeah. This is the Portland Police Bureau. This is a civil disturbance that we have declared a unlawful assembly. This fence was many feet taller than it was a few days ago. Those are flashbangs, and the people on the right side outside of the camera frame were reportedly shot by various types of munitions as well, from chalk rounds to rubber bullets. department. Keep in mind, every zing you hear is a shot. I'm telling you, man, pussy ass cops, man. Over here, man, we ain't doing shit, man. Look, look, they want to start fucking fires, man. Like, we don't even do this shit. We the peaceful ones, man. The fuck, man? Fuck this shit, man. Now you can't hear it, but right now I was just grabbed by police and they're pushing me with their mace out. As I aimed my camera in their direction, the officer grabbed me and yelled, get away from here, kid, and then let me go. Now, as this happened, protesters in the park were being maced while others were being arrested or shot or a combination of all three.
Half her. Half her. Okay. Come on. Stay together. Stay together. I'm on Facebook Live. Help me. I can't see. Really. I need milk. Help me, medic. Medic. Help me. History. Walking back forward? Yes, sir. Right. Notice how all the hands are up. I have no clue what's going on. I was sitting down right over here. Next thing you know, uh, this. So. <laughs> What you don't see is that in the corner, there's a police officer pointing a gas gun at two girls and me as we were following instructions. He didn't stop until I stopped walking and pointed the camera at him. The officer then spoke to the lady, then kept walking. And that's what you're seeing right here. Hey, what'd they say? What'd they say? He was like, why are you doing this shit? I'm like, I'm not doing anything. He's like, yes, you are. I'm like, I'm not. And he's like, then everybody else. It's not everybody else. And it doesn't even matter because it doesn't hurt them. They are behind armor. They don't care. They love the power. They love the freedom to kill. At this point, most of us became so used to the flashbangs that I was ineffective. Though there were protesters throwing firecrackers as well that sounded very similar. <laughs> Do you know why they're using force? No. Did we they threw use stuff, force but it you? was like pepper, like water bottles mm -hmm. over the fence. That was it. Gotcha. Yeah. Where are they pushing everybody? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. They keep driving around. So where are you going now? Like You're just blood walking blood around. Blood. We're just gonna walk around. All right. See where it leads us. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> So the police were pushing everybody one way, then going around to the opposite end where they're telling people to go and then cutting them off and telling them to go the opposite way while arresting everybody. Eventually I decided to ask them where exactly do they want us to go? And there's a cameraman next to me as well. And they pull out their baton to hit that cameraman. And then I pointed the camera at them and then he puts his baton away and he tells me to go the way that I'm currently going. So we'll see what happens. After ultimately pushing protesters to a location about half a mile away, they regrouped and stopped harassing people walking around like myself. So overall, what do we take away from this? Well, certainly there are two sides to every coin. You have the peaceful day protest versus the violent night protests. 
And my goal here is essentially to demonstrate the differences between the two as a way to be able to understand the realities of the situation, because ultimately nobody really knows how this is going to play out or what will come from this. Though we do know in order to achieve lasting peace, we have to address the policy process. So for example, why aren't body cameras nationally enforced? Or what happens if a police officer shuts off their body camera? in order to deter negligence either intentionally or unintentionally. And finally, let's examine the civil immunities that police officers have that prevents them from being punished for violating another human being's civil liberties. So with time, these policies will be addressed, but not because somebody else will ensure that it does, but rather because we will. Until this moment comes when policy changes, there is no justice and there is no peace. Thank you.